Hello everybody, today we are studying the last part, the last part of the reported speech grammar section, finally. Super good, last part of the reported speech, good. So today we are studying speech verbs, okay? We have studied reported speech with affirmative, negative, interrogative and imperative, wow, and now we have speech verbs. Now speech verbs are way easier, okay, super super easy. I'm going to show you uh, this lesson in two different parts. Part one is about strictly speech verbs, like for example, bellow. Bellow is a verb that means to, uh, to say something in a roar, okay? Roar is uh, the sound that, for example, bears make, okay? When you go to the North Pole and you find a, a, a bear there, and the bear stands up and he or she looks at you and, and you're like, oh my god, what are you going to do? And then he or she opens the mouth and the sound that is emitted is a roar, okay? So when you bellow, it's like uh, it's when, when you say something in a, in a roar, okay? Now the next one I'm going to show you is grumble. These, as you can see, are different verbs that we use to express. These are very different from, uh, from the verbs like say, or tell, right? Because say and tell don't have any extra meaning. They just refer to the action of speaking. Uh, to say something is to speak about something and to tell something is, is to just to speak, okay? To open your mouth and, and pronounce words, words. So these here, this list of speech verbs I'm bringing you today are not say and tell. They are quite different because they have meaning inside them, okay? They have extra meaning. Like, for example, bellow that is in a roar, or grumble when you complain, when you complain about something, okay? Let me just change this. I'm, like, super careful with these things, okay? When you grumble, uh, it's that you are complaining. So you're like, oh, blah, 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 that's grumble, okay? Good. Next one is going to be mumble, which is very similar, in fact, but is quite different in meaning. Uh, when you mumble, you say something in a muffled boy voice. A muffled voice, it sounds like muffin, right? <laughs> Maybe you're hungry now. Uh, muffled voice is when you are speaking and then your voice uh, is not as good as it should be. Y your voice is kind of, um, uh, how, how to say, uh, you, you cannot hear your voice clearly because it is muffled. It, it doesn't sound... 100% your voice, it's like, okay, it's not your voice, it's a muffled voice, it's 50% your voice, all right, that's mumble. All right, uh, next one is going to be murmur, which is very similar to Spanish, murmurar, okay, so you know this one, you have murmur, okay, now that's a funny, a funny way of, of pronouncing that, right, murmur, yeah, it's murmur, okay, now the next one is going to be mutter, when you mutter something, is when you talk uh, indistinctively. Let me just write it for you, indistinctively, okay? Indistinctively, okay, uh, indistinctively. Uh, that is, when you are saying things, but you cannot understand what, what when someone says something and you cannot really understand what he or she is saying, then that person is talking indistinctively. You cannot figure out what words are coming out of their mouths, okay? So you say that that person is <clears throat> muttering, okay? The next one is shriek. Shriek is when you uh, when you scream, but in a very loud and high key uh, note. High key is agudo, right? So when you're when, uh, little children, they shriek, okay? When they have a tantrum, they usually shriek. All right. Now the next one is shout. Now that I am now that I have mentioned shriek, let's talk about shout. Shout is to to say something loudly and powerfully. Okay, you know about shouting, right? Shout. And finally, we have whispering. This first list, which is uh, to speak using only your breath. Okay, when you speak like this, then that is a whisper. Okay. Some people love uh, hearing whispering, and some people hate it. So, what type of what type of person are you? The the whisperer one or or, or the hater of whispers? All right, this is the first list. Okay, so now, whenever you find a sentence 
that says that the mentions uh, the the words say or tell you can pay attention to the sentence and change say or tell for one of these depending on the meaning of the sentence and depending on the context of the situation uh, in which the the utterance takes place okay so you should pay attention to that for example for the writing part uh, if you if you mention some of these in the writing that's that's awesome all right now let me give you the second list in this second list I'm going to show you speech verbs that are followed by by prepositions all right so for example you can find boast about boast about to boast about when someone boasts about something it's uh, usually when that person is showing off okay to show off to boast about is uh, when you have for example if for instance if you have someone that is very rich and this person is like oh I have a lot of money that person is boasting about his money or showing off about her money all right now the next one is confess confess is a verb that you know the meaning of all right now which preposition goes with confess if you have to confess something you have to confess to doing something okay to you have to confess uh, uh, to to having done something that's that's the preposition all right insist is another uh, verb whose meaning is very easy now what preposition is followed uh, I mean what position goes together with with insist when you insist in something do you insist in something or do you insist on something the correct answer is on something you insist on something right when you complain you always complain about something as well all right and when you object object means when you disagree all right if you disagree about something then you object you object to oops to so for example you have um mm, you say let me think of an example uh you can say uh, uh mm, 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 okay uh you say i object to no i cannot think of any examples actually i'm awful at examples why am i so bad at, at thinking of examples all right i'll leave you some examples in the <laughs> in the in the description of the video anyway all right beg for uh last one is beg for when you beg for something that is the when you ask please 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 all right when you ask for something to happen or not to happen you are begging for something all right uh, similar in Spanish for beg is um, rogar, implorar, okay, when you beg for something. And for object is exactly like in Spanish, objetar, okay, object. Uh, pay attention to pronunciation. This is an object, okay, when you say, when you see this word, you say, okay, this is an object. Yeah, but when you have it as a verb, that's object, okay, object. So now that you have these two lists of speech verbs, you are already able to forget about say and tell in writing and you can change say and tell for one of these different and beautiful options all right so here you are guys speech verbs for you uh for homework we are going to do students book oops students book uh page 60 exercises one two and three okay and exercises in the description of the video all right uh, it should be easy because mainly because exercise number one is already here so uh, come on exercise two is also here so all, the only thing you have to do is copy mm -hmm. and uh, exercise number three is also very easy all right so really homework for you is exercise three and the description of this video that you can find below uh, this 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 right video okay so uh, again any questions any problems just feel free to text me okay we can have a little chat and we don't feel alone anymore okay hope you're hope you're doing well uh, if there's anything I can do for you just let me know all right thanks for watching guys bye bye